There we go. So it's so great to see you. And uh, maybe I've seen you before um, in the Inspiring Futures and bringing some more guests in now. It's great to see you all. Some people all popped up and I didn't notice. All right, we got everybody in, I think. So um, it's great to see you. And uh, my name is Katie Hurstein, and I'm the Program and Events Manager at Girl Scouts of Colorado. And in my job, I feel really lucky to be the one to deliver to you um, Inspiring Futures, which is our virtual series where we introduce Girl Scouts to accomplished women in a variety of professions. So you can begin to be inspired about your, what your future might look like. So, and we have a perfect partner that is working with us. Uh, they sponsored Inspiring Futures and their College Invest. So College Invest is a Colorado savings program and it makes it easy to save for your education after high school. So it's basically a fancy way of saying that they exist for one reason and it's to help you and your families put away money to save for your own inspired future. So, and I started a College Invest uh, savings plan, plan for both of my Girl Scouts when we moved to Colorado about 10 years ago. And I now have a daughter going off to college this fall. And I'm pretty glad that actually we put some money away with College Invest to help save for her college future. So it's like a piggy bank where you put in money, but it's even better because uh, parents or caregivers or grandparents put it in and it grows tax free. So they don't get taxed on that money and it gets used for your educational expenses past high school. It can be um, for college or for an apprenticeship um, or trade school anywhere across the country. So it's a pretty awesome plan. So we're going to hear from the CEO of um, College Invest about inspiring futures. Hi, I'm Angela Beyer. CEO of College Invest, and welcome to this episode of Inspiring Futures. Through Girl Scouts, you've learned that if you can dream it, you can do it. And here at College Invest, Colorado's education savings program, we help you get there. And you're never too young to begin to imagine your inspired future. So how will you impact this world? Will you run your own business, invent a new technology, or maybe even discover a life-saving cure? But wherever your inspiration takes you, a College Invest Savings Plan can help make your dreams a reality. Now, prepare to be inspired. And thank you to Angela. So a few housekeeping items. So we will be recording this series and the session, um, and it'll go up onto our own Inspiring Futures YouTube channel. Um, so I'd love for you to show your faces now and chat with us. Um, but when it goes on to the recording, um, I will be able to gray out your faces and stuff. So you can have no problem if you want to share your face right now. It's no problem. It's not going to be on the recording that will be on YouTube for maybe ever. <laughs> so whatever works for you. Um, you can also, you know, put any information into the chat box and interact with us whatever way you feel most comfortable. All right. And on to our Girl Scout um, on law and honor. And if you'd like to unmute yourself, you can join me or I'm happy to do it on my own too. So here we go. On my honor, I will try, I will try to serve, to serve God, God in my and country and help people at all, at all times and, and to live by, by the Girl, Girl Scout law and the Girl Scout law. I will do my best, do best to be, to be honest, honest and fair, and fair friendly, friendly and helpful, and helpful considering, considering caring, caring courageous, courageous and strong, responsible, and responsible for what I, what I say and do, and to, and to respect, respect myself, myself and others, others respect, respect authority, authority, use resources wisely, resource 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 make the world a better place, a place and be a sister, be a sister to every cast. Thanks for joining me. That was awesome. And here we're all here today to meet with and learn about photography with Haley Carpinelli. She's a very close friend of mine and I'm so happy that she's joining us here today to give us some tips and tricks about photography. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and make sure, oops, it's one second. I just wanna make sure I've made it possible for Haley to share her screen. <laughs> Hi, Katie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm excited to be here today with you to talk about photography. 
Um, I am a professional photographer and I mainly fo uh, photograph people because that's the, the, those are the types of subjects that I like to photograph. Um, I often do uh, senior photos for people. I photograph couples, families, um, and I also um, do headshots um, and take photos for businesses for them to put onto their website. Um, what I love about photography is there are so many different things that you can do with it, depending on the type of photos that you like to take. Um, you can be a wildlife photographer, fashion photographer. Um, like my daughter really loves looking at real estate online. You can be a real estate photographer, pretty much any type of photo that you um, are interested in taking. There's a market out there for it. Um, so I, I think that's, pretty cool. People and businesses and organizations always, always need photos. So whatever you're interested in photographing, uh, there's somebody out there that needs photos just like that. Um, so today, um, why I'm here with you is I want to give you some tips and tricks that I have learned along the way that can help you create a stronger photograph. Um, and I've received several photographs from, um, from you. Thank you so much for those of you that were able to get them in. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I, one of the reasons I asked you to do that exercise is that it makes you start thinking about point of view, um, or your perspective, um, uh, the, the vantage point from which you took the photograph. And I think the things that we'll talk about today, um, will sort of help you rethink your point of view. And maybe you can go back to the same scene that you originally photographed and you can take what you learned today and make, uh, make an even stronger photograph. So, um, I think Katie, if you, if you're ready, I can go ahead and share my screen. Perfect. Okay. Let's get into here. Okay. Looks great. Okay, good. I'm glad we had a little bit of trouble earlier. So, okay. So how to create a strong photograph. Um, I'm sure most of us have heard that saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. And it's true. A, a really good picture is going to communicate a message to your viewer. And whatever message it is that you're trying to tell your viewer, you can learn to tell it really well by learning what, um, what are called the elements of a photograph. So let's back up just a little bit. So there, there are three parts to a photograph. The first part is your subject. And really when you, when you go to photograph something, you wanna know what your photograph is about. Sometimes you might find it along the way, um, you might find it in the process of trying to figure out what your subject is. That something might catch your interest and you're like, okay, that's, that's what, I, that's what my photo is going to be about. But the subject of your photograph is the focus of your image. And that it can really be a lot of things, a person, place, animal, it could even be like an emotion or an idea. Um, so kind of early on in whatever you're going out to take a picture of decide first, what is the subject of your photograph? Um, the second part to a photograph are the elements, and that's really what we're going to talk um, about primarily today. Um, there, the elements are what you use in the scene you're photographing to tell your story. And there are six main elements you can use. Um, the first are lines and shapes. The second is color, uh, light and shadow, repetition, contrast and moment. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about those in a second here. Um, lastly, the third part to a photograph are decisions. The decisions are how you choose to photograph your subject. So one of those decisions includes point of view, which was the point of the exercise I gave you before um, our time together today, kind of moving around a scene and like, how, how many different points of views or perspective can you get? Um, so, so that's one decision that you can make. Um, the other, which uh, 
I'm not sure where everyone's at a different point in their photography journey. So, but depth of field, what type of camera lens you use, um, if you want to add some intentional blur or really freeze the moment and what you choose to focus on um, or, or not focus on in your picture. Those are some other decisions that you can make. Um, but like I said, primarily for today, we're going to talk about the elements of a photograph. So we, we kind of already touched on this. Um, so I, th I think I'm going to skip past this, but basically the point of the point of view of the exercise I gave you is to see how what you learned today might change your point of view the next time you photograph a scene. So, okay, let's dive in. Let's talk about the elements of a photograph. So one of the first elements is lines. Um, and lines have a different, um, uh, they can do something different within a photograph depending on which way they're running. So a horizontal line is gonna draw your eye across the photograph. Um, also a horizontal line can really like anchor your subject um, in the photograph. Vertical lines, um, kind of like what we see here in this picture with this fence, they're gonna draw the viewer's eyes up and down um, depending on what it is that you're photographing. Like maybe you're in a forest with super tall trees all those lines of the trees are gonna draw your eye up and down and they can really create a sense of scale and wonder. Um, diagonal lines are also really powerful. They can pull the viewer into your photograph, especially when the lines intersect with your subject. Um, wavy or curved lines, like the ones that we see up in this photograph above, they create a little bit more relaxed feeling to a photograph. Um, they can lead a viewer's eyes a little more slowly through your photograph. So why I included this photograph is we've actually got a lot of lines present here. We've got horizontal lines running at the top of the fence and all those lines sort of lead you right to this little boy who's the subject of the photograph. We've got vertical lines in the fence. And then we've also got this wavy line going across the fence. Um, and almost when you're looking at this photograph, we see where this wavy line is that he's drawn from the stick in the snow. You can almost see that line continue on to where he hasn't even drawn the line yet because you know he's gonna do it in that next section of fence. So lines have a really, really powerful effect on a photograph and they can really pull you in. The second part, um, uh, of this is shapes. And so shapes are sort of, they're in everything around us. Um, and really, if you start looking at photographs, you can start finding shapes in pretty much every photograph. Um, some of them are more obvious than others. So circles, ovals, triangles, squares, rectangles, they're all going to have a little bit of a, uh, impart a little bit of a different mood or emotion to the photograph. A circle hat, like and an oval, they have a little bit more movement and energy and they can kind of create a connection with your viewer. Triangles are pretty strong and dynamic shape and they can be used to create interest in your photograph and also to direct the viewer's eyes to your subject. Um, in the photo I'm gonna show you next, we'll kind of go through and see all the different shapes that we can find. And I think you'll see quite a few triangles. Um, they're, they're oftentimes not as obvious as a circle. Um, squares and rectangles, super easy to recognize. And they're, they're also a really good tool that you can use to frame and draw interest to your subject. So, okay, let's look at this photograph. How many different shapes can you spot in this photograph? Anybody wanna, wanna raise in? Sometimes when I have it in this screen sharing mode, it's hard for me to tell who might have a hand raised. Um, if there's anybody that wants to, to, to spot some of the shapes or I can go ahead and describe it too. Anybody? Yeah, I don't see any hands raised, so. Okay. I'll just go ahead and kind of point to it. So you oh, see, Cora, actually, Cora put in the chat 10 or more, she says 10, 10 or more shapes. Oh, easy. Yeah, I, I haven't like physically counted how many. Um, but yeah, we've got some rectangles back there with the records that are on the wall. We've also got a really big rectangle um, right here with this curtain coming down and sort of drawing your attention to her, that white curtain in the back. 
We've got circles. We've got these like little circle lights inside the curtain. Um, and then also like less obvious, we have some triangles being formed here with her arms that kind of leads your gaze directly to her head. We've got another triangle forming here with her knees. Yeah, so, yeah we've got a, noticed that. Yeah, we've got I a mean, lot Christina, of- Christine noticed the triangles. Okay, is, uh, is there anybody that wants to jump on and say anything? No? Okay. So All right. Lamp, uh, we got another comment that the lamp looks kind of an oval and yeah. the pillows, the shape of the pillows. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's all, there's a, there's a lot of interest going on here with different shapes. So yeah, I, uh, I haven't stopped to count how many, but yeah, 10, maybe more. I, I think, I think there's a lot of shapes present. So yeah. So that just gives you kind of an idea of how you can, you can use the shapes in the photograph to draw interest. Like this photo might not be as interesting if that arm in the front wasn't forming a triangle and kind of bringing, you know, bringing her hand back to her head. It might not, it might not be as interesting if that curtain wasn't, you know, in the background and kind of leading our eye down to her. Um, so yeah, so that's just one way you can play with shapes in an image. Okay, uh, one of the next elements um, I wanna talk about is color. So colors have personalities. And if we can be really mindful about how we use color in a photograph, it can help us tell our story really well and um, do what we might have really intended with the photograph, which is invoke some sort of emotional uh, response or a mood from our viewer. Um, so here are some moods that colors can make us feel red, um, you know, love, anger, passion, orange, we've got warm, active, adventurous, yellow is a very happy color, it can be energetic, but it can also be calming. Um, green is very like fresh, um, hopeful, it can be exotic. Um, blues tends to be a little bit more calming, restful, kind of feels a little bit safe. Um, it's familiar. Purple, we've got leadership, royalty, mystery. White, innocence, elegant, graceful, peaceful. And black, uh, which is actually one of my absolute favorite colors to use in a photograph, um, can have a formal uh, feel to it, but it also can impart like some sadness or mystery. Um, so looking at this photo above, we've got, we've got some blues, we've got some versions of black, you know, whether it's black or gray. Um, and then we've got some red. And I'm just wondering if anybody is getting a, a mood or any sort of emotion when they look at this photo. Are you, are you able to see the chat, Haley? I, you know what? I can't see. Okay, chat. I can tell you. Um, so Cora said gray makes me feel sad and upset. And Christine said teal equals water and coolness to her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. This this picture makes me feel kind of sad too. Just makes me wanna, it makes me wanna get home, um, I think is what, you know what, I think now maybe I can see the chat. Okay. Let's see here. See, yeah, you feel very damp. Yeah, for sure. And then Athena says this picture, this picture makes me feel peaceful. Yeah, it's interesting. Like color has, that's why there's no one emotion or mood that a color can impart to a person because I think we all experience it a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, I mean, whatever emotion you're getting, that's awesome. And that's the whole point is to invoke some sort of emotion uh, with your viewer. Okay. So this next picture, um, light and shadow. So light adds mood and emotion to a photograph and light can be many different colors. Um, you know, this is, this light's pretty golden. It was taken right before sunset. After that sunset, uh, light gets pretty blue. Um, it can also be really blue first thing in the morning. So light has, I think light has a lot of personality too. It can be harsh, soft, happy, sad, dramatic, quiet, even mysterious. Um, and I think equally important to light is its opposite, which is shadow. 
Um, so the dark parts of the scene are just as important because they draw attention to the light. They, they're sort of companions. So some questions to ask yourself when photographing is, what is the light doing in my scene? Is it helping me or is it holding me back from creating the photograph I really want? And what shadows are created from the light? So I'm just curious if anybody, um, like with light and shadow, just kind of what, if anybody has thoughts or any questions on light and shadow? I can see the chat now. No. Nope. Okay, if anybody has a question, we can come back to it. Okay, so repetition. This is another one of my favorite things to use in photography. So repetition can uh, be super obvious or it can be a little bit more subtle. Um, so repetition is when something present in your photograph is repeated. It doesn't always have to be something extremely obvious. Um, a lot of times you see repetition in bridges, buildings, um, columns. It can be something a little bit more subtle like this. It can be like the stack of donuts. We've repeated an element in the photograph and that instantly grabs our attention. Um, Anytime we repeat something, it makes a photograph more interesting. So yeah, you can find repetition and patterns pretty much anywhere you are if you start looking and kind of thinking outside of the box. Um, okay, so Cora asked a question. She says, can the different styles of art make the shadow darker? Um, I I'm, a, I'm not quite sure what, uh, what you mean when you say can different styles of art. Um, could you, do you want to like, do you want to define that really quick? And cause I'd love to answer your question. Like the different artist style. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, um, yeah. So let, let's just talk about it in terms of photography for a second. So that's sort of where editing comes into play. Like, yes, you can find deeper, darker shadows just, you know, when you're, when you're looking <clears throat> for them in your, in the scene that you want to photograph. But then when you were to go and edit your photographs, that's something that you can like stylistically, you, you can make your shadows darker. Like there are a lot of photographers out there that have really, really just deep, deep shadows. And it's like the, the whole picture is just, so contrasty, like super dark darks and very light lights, or or maybe more uh, shades of gray, but extremely dark blacks. Um, that's sort of a stylistic thing, and that's sort of what makes you unique as an artist, and that will help define your voices if you're sort of known for doing that. Um, so great, great question. Do I want my like my? If you're asking me particular particularly if I want my photos lighter or darker. Um, you know what? I think most of the photos I have in here kind of, they're, they're sort of in the middle. Um, I think it depends on what I was photographing. Like if I was taking a picture of somebody like in a, like a really cool, like parking garage, I'd want, I'd want it to be pretty dark. I'd really want to deepen those shadows. Yes. All these photos are mine. Um, so I think it really depends on what, what mood you were going for. I think you could, um, as an artist, if you want to impart sort of a, a more mysterious mood or um, a little bit more sadness, yeah, I'd, I'd want those, those shadows to be pretty obvious and pretty dark. Um, yes, this particular person is my son. Um, okay, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so we're still talking about repetition here. So like I said, repetition can be obvious or subtle, even within the same scene. Um, but anytime you spot it, try to use it in your image. Um, it really will add quite a bit of interest. Um, and then, you know, like that's part of that whole point of view exercise is you might really focus in on the repetition in a scene. And then you might look at your, you know, your images and say, you know what, I don't really want to focus on the repetition. That's not really what my, I want my photo to be about in this particular scenario. So, but I think, I think learning to recognize these things around you um, will help you, you know, uh, determine if you want to use them or not in your image. Okay. 
Let's move on. Okay. So contrast. So contrast is comparing one thing to another in your photograph. Um, and it can, you can find it in a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's really, really obvious. And sometimes it's a little bit more subtle. Um, an example, so, so here's just two different types of contrast that we'll talk about. Um, you can have visual contrast, and then you can have conceptual contrast, which is what we refer to as juxtaposition. Um, an example of visual contrast could be like a really strong black and white image. That's a lot of contrast right there. Um, that the a picture that we had shown earlier of that, like those really like the the golden light and the really deep shadow at the skate park, that's another form of contrast. Um, it could be complete opposites in a scene, like one person wearing all red or the other person wearing all blue or one person wearing a, a suit and the other person wearing a bikini standing right next to them. You know, like that's, that's different. That's putting two very different things um, together. So an example of conceptual contrast would, it, sort of similar, like a, a young child holding hands with an elderly grandparent. We've got old and we've got young. Um, I said like a person wearing a bathing suit in a snowstorm, you know, like that's like unexpected. That's not what you would have thought somebody would be wearing in a snowstorm. So that creates some sort of contrast. Um, so when we look at these two photos, so the top one is like a, a scene downtown, uh, probably outside of somebody's apartment, uh, probably two different windows for two different apartments, I would think, because they all, they both have their own little stairwell. So on one side, you see the, you know, there's this foliage coming out of there. There's, it literally looks like the word help spray painted on one side and the other side is very stark. So there's some contrast right there. Um, sort of like some interest that draws you in, like something is different on the left than it is on the right. Um, the image below, you've got a girl lounging in like a pool inner tube, but on the grass. So that's, that's unexpected. You would, you would think somebody lounging in an inner tube would be in the pool. Um, so there's a little bit of contrast right there. Um, so there's, there's so many different ways that you can create contrast. Um, I see some questions here. So, okay, going back to repetition, do you use repetition a lot? Um, it's one, I'm really drawn to lines as an artist. And so I think I probably do use repetition a lot. I probably use lines the most and then repetition might come in at like a close second or third. Um, and that's super normal. I think I even say that later in the, in the presentation is a lot of artists are drawn to one of the elements uh, over others. And that's what makes your voice unique. And that's what makes those images yours. And people might look at them and be like, oh, that was taken by Cora. Like this, this toy looks like one of Cora's photographs or one of Athena's photographs. Um, okay. Drones. Do you use drones for your photos? I actually have, I don't own a drone. I'm thinking about buying one, but I actually have used a drone. I did it for somebody's senior pictures, um, laying out in a field. I don't have that photo in this presentation, but it ended up being super, super cool. And I'm, he was a big drone flyer. Um, so we used his drone to, um, to take a picture of him lying in a field and the, the perspective, the point of view, like we were discussing, is unparalleled. How else could you get that high? Um, it, it's it's just a really another really cool uh, technique that you can use in your portfolio. Um, do you ever have pics of things like a? Uh, I'm not sure what that word. Candinal in a gray scene. Um, I don't. I don't think I do. If you uh, a little bit later, if you want to unmute and sort of define that for me, I can give you a definitive answer on that. Um, oh, a cardinal, like a bird. Um, you know what? I'm not big. Like I mentioned before, um, I'm not a big, uh, I mostly like to photograph people. Um, I, I'm not really a bird photographer, but there are some people that that is, that are all they do. If anybody's on Instagram, um, I hope this is allowed Katie, but look up a woman named sure Beth. Is. Okay. Beth Shepherd photography. Um, I think 
that that's her, her, uh, her handle on Instagram. And she pretty much only photographs birds and it's amazing. So Beth Shepherd photography, um, definitely check her out if you like birds. Um, okay. Moment. So for me, moment is sort of the last and oftentimes the most important part, uh, or element of a photograph in, in terms of making it uh, the difference between a good photograph and a great photograph. So moment is when everything you envisioned for the photograph comes together and you realize that that is the right moment and you take you take the shot. You're anticipating when the scene is at its best. So this partic uh, particular image right here, this is you know group of girls. Um, the subject is clearly the girl in the middle in white. And for me, the moment in this shot was when there were enough people gathered around her. And I just felt that this is the moment when she'll, when she'll have just the most beautiful smile and the best look on her face. And so that's when I chose to take the picture. Um, so I think I have another example of moment down here. Okay, yeah. So I would love it if people would un, uh, if anyone's comfortable uh, to unmute, because let's just take a look at this image and discuss the importance of moment um, in this particular shot. Like for me, I felt we had, so this was a trail that we had hiked into in Grand Teton National Park. Um, and you could jump off of, I think it was like a 22 foot cliff, which 22 feet doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're standing at the top of that rock, that rock, it might as well be a hundred, I'm telling you. Um, so, but when we were hiking in, I immediately saw, like I could see where people were jumping off this cliff, but I could see this valley kind of in the, you know, in the background. And I just happened to see somebody jump and I'm like, you know, I bet if you stood or if I stood in the right spot, I could capture them right in between this valley. And so I chose to position myself there. Um, this is my daughter jumping off this. Um, and sure enough, I was like, I, th that's the shot right there. Like I, like I, I was right. Like you can really capture a person right between this valley. So for me, moment in this photograph was her suspended in the air right there. Like I didn't want her feet to, to be too much lower on the horizon because then they would sort of disappear, you know, into the, the mountains behind her. And I thought if she was too much higher in the scene that, um, you know, maybe it, it wouldn't be so obvious that, Hey, she, she's actually like perfectly framed between this Valley. Um, so if anybody wants to unmute or ask a question in the chat, like, um, if you think, like, I would love to know, do you think this is the right moment? Or do you think, um, do you think another moment would have been better? And you won't hurt my feelings. Don't worry. I have, I have one of her that I like a lot too, that where she's like landed down in the water. Um, but I mean, just as an artist, I'm just curious what, what you all think, what, what, what would have been the right moment for you in this picture? Anybody? It looks like she's jumping into a hole. Yeah, it's, I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a huge lake. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Like, a, like the hole in between the valley. Yeah. It looks good, but I think if she was a tiny bit lower, it would be great. Yeah, maybe, maybe she'd get just a little bit lower, like her feet just kind of almost towards that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think in this situation here, it's however you thought, however you thought your subject would be best framed. Um, and just because I chose to position her here doesn't mean that it'd be the right, uh, the right position for your photograph. So that's just something to think about. I would love for you all to think about the next time you pick up your camera or cell phone, whatever you're photographing with, um, all of the techniques we've talked or the elements we've talked about today, um, you can do either with a cell phone or a camera. Um, but yeah, the next time you, you go to take a photograph, think about moment. What, what is like the right moment to take the shot? It's so easy with everything being digital. You can take, 
you know, a hundred and go back through and be like, oh, that was a good one. But if you start thinking about it before you ever take the picture, um, you're, I think you'll get a better shot and then you won't have a hundred pictures to comb through. So, okay, I'm gonna pass by a couple of these because these were from the younger girls earlier. So, okay, let's get into the images that you all shared. Um, and thank you for everybody that was able to send in an image. Um, I'm glad that you did the, the photography exercise of photographing a scene in six significantly different ways because it forces you to think about what is the best place for me to actually take this picture? Is it getting in super close and capturing details? Is it standing really far back and getting a lot of the environment um, around my subject? Is it up high? Like somebody mentioned drones. Um, you know, is it, should I, should I be much further above my subject or should I be below my subject? If you, if you push yourself to think about all of the different ways that you can photograph a scene, um, you'll, your photos are going to start getting really creative and really good. Um, it's one of my favorite exercises. Um, so, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the first photo from Helen. This is a gorgeous photo. She has, I mean, we've got the, we've got the detail of the drops um, on the petals, like, and look at all the shapes that are present. Like, look at all these circles, look at the color, like look at how complimentary the lavender is with the green behind it. Um, I think that was such a strong choice to photograph it. You probably shot this from above. Um, and, and, you know, instead of having like the, these petals against, you know, like the blue of the sky or something, I think the green is a really, really strong choice. Um, so look at, we have, we have the water, the circular and oval water droplets on the petals. And then we have the oval of the petals themselves. So that's just drawing us in even more. And then of course, right in the center of the flower, we have, you know, the, the bud, another circle. And then we've got this really like soft blurred green background around it. Um, really great. I, I would love to know. So like I've mentioned, um, shapes, um, I've mentioned, we've got repetition going on. Um, we've got color. I'd love to know, does anybody else see any of the elements that we talked about today? And Helen, I would love to, to know, um, I would love to hear if, if you want to add anything about your photo. Uh, yeah, I can talk about it. Okay. Well, I, I actually took this picture last summer, I think. Okay. Um, I was at my grandpa's house and we were just kind of like, my cousin and I were just kind of running around and I saw it and I was like, that's really pretty. So I just took a pic, a, a few, actually a few different pictures of it. Okay. Um, because it had just rained and I thought it was so pretty. And now it's my background. because. Yeah, that's awesome. So. Yes, yeah, so you captured moment there too. Like this picture wouldn't have been possible if it had not just rained. So, I mean, you've got a lot of different elements going on here and they all work really, really nice together. Great job, well done. Okay, so let's go on to this picture from Ella. So Ella, okay, you have a lot of elements going on here too. Like right away I see the line, we've got the line of this concrete path that kind of winds through the left side of the frame. And then you, we don't, we, we sort of see where the concrete path disappears, but we know it keeps going across the frame to the right. So we've got this like implied line. So you're sort of leading us through the scene. Um, we've got the juxtaposition of this bicycle just kind of like, you know, laid down. Um, and so that's, that's creating some sort of interest too. Like what, like, where did the owner of that bicycle go? Like it, it imparts a little bit of curiosity to me. Um, so we've got, we've got like the cool uh, lines going from this sort of tree or really, really large uh, bush that's turned into a tree. So that's adding some visual contrast there. We, there's some shadow running across the path. Um, then we've got like the little peaks of snow. So we can, we're getting some details about the scene. It looks like maybe it had snowed a couple days before and now it's melting. Somebody brought their bike out. They meant to go up this path and maybe something caught their eye and they jumped off their bike. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of interest in this photograph. Um, well done. I, 
I am, um, I would love to know if you have anything that you would like to add about your photo. Uh, yeah, I took that a couple days ago uh, on a trail right by my house. And I thought it was pretty cool how the houses behind the tree kind of like the tree was in the middle of the space. Yeah. I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. So do you, in this photograph, what would you say that you wanted your subject to be? Would it be the tree or would it be the bike, the path? Like what, what was, what was your intended subject? Uh, I think it could be the path as my, my intended subject and then kind of the other objects, um, to also look at that's kind of surrounding the path. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Like right away. That's why I wanted to clarify. Cause right away I kind of focused on the path. Like, I think that was the very first thing I said. So I'm definitely getting that that was the subject. Um, and then, yeah, you're right. I love how the, the tree is sort of right in the middle of the houses it gives you a lot of detail. Like this is in a neighborhood. Um, and I just, I, I got to tell you, I love that bike. Is that your bike? Just kind of <laughs> like, did you hop off the bike to take the photo or I, I love it in the photograph. It's um, you can't see, but right off to the side, there's a kid okay. um, playing on some rocks that are over there. And so he dropped his bike off. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I feel, I honestly feel like this could be right by my house. It looks very similar. Um, okay. All right. So let's go on. Well, yeah, well done, Ella. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your photo. Okay. All right. So this one is from Athena. So this is so cool. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Athena, I think you may have captured this when it was snowing. I'm pretty sure that's what I see here. Snow, um, like flurries kind of around it, which is a really cool contrast against the dark, um, all these dark branches. And there's a lot of visual interest going on here because we have branches, we have lines running in several different ways. You know, we've got a, a, the larger branch or the tree trunk right in the middle. Then we've got, you know, brand, like smaller, more spindly branches coming off the side. Um, my eye, all of the different lines that are in this photo has me kind of weaving through the photo, which is cool because uh, one way to create a strong photograph is you want your, you want your subject or your viewer, excuse me, you want your viewer to want to spend a little bit more time with your photograph. And that's what I find myself doing right now is that my eyes are following all of these lines. And there's a lot of really cool contrast. The, the branches are very dark against the white sky because it's snowing. And then you've got a little bit of snow going on in the foreground, which gives us a clue as to what the weather is outside. So this is a cool, this is a cool photo. Well done. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to say about your photo? Um, I don't think so, but like, uh, I don't think there's anything to add. Um, okay. <laughs> It, did, did you intend, like I was telling you, my eye is kind of following the lines of all these branches. Is that something that you intended to do? Or is that what initially caught your eye about this scene? I just wanted to take a picture of, take a picture of the landscape and the, and the snow because like I love snow and I thought like snow is like really pretty. So I thought, thought that I was be really cool to take a picture of the snow and the tree. It was like really cool too. Yeah, very cool. Well, I mean, that's that's like the beginning of a photograph right there is like setting out like, okay, I want to photograph some sort of landscape and then finding something in that landscape that really catches your eye. So good for you. Uh, well done. Thank you so much for sharing your photo. Okay, let's go on to this photo from Cora. So this is beautiful. Look at the colors that we have going on here. Um, it's We have some of the same colors that were in a, a previous photo that we looked at of a flower. Um, we've got the, the green with some lavender in the background, but then this one pulls in orange and the, the white smaller buds in the foreground. Um, the, the colors all work so well together. Like I look at this and I think spring, which I think all of us are here in Colorado and obviously it is not spring outside. So this photo just makes me happy. The colors in it really like there's, there's an energy and there's a playfulness, um, in the foreground with the orange. And then we've got like the softer, uh, calmer, more, you know, muted colors in the background. Um, 
So look at the repetition that's present in this photo. So the angle that Cora captured this rose, this orange rose, um, you just, do you find your eye just kind of like following the circles, like as it spirals out from that inner, that inner bud, like that's what my eye is totally doing. Um, I think that's such a cool use of repetition there, um, along with the color that you've used. Um, and then another interesting way that Cora has used color here is she's captured this green in the background. Then there's also a pop of green in the foreground, which sort of makes the whole thing tie together. And then of course the green um, that are like in the really, really small stems leading up to the white flowers. And then she's got some depth in there too. Like the, the focus is the flower, but um, there's, you know, a little bit of like, um, like the depth of field has changed from like, as you can see, like it's slightly out of focus with the white flowers up at the top because she's chosen to focus on the rose below, which I think is absolutely the right move. Um, yeah, I, Cora, would, do you want to say anything about your photo? So she says she took it today and she took a lot of pictures of it. My mom just got the flowers today and I saw it as a wonderful opportunity. So she took the chance. Yeah. I mean, great opportunity. Um, that's a, sort of touching on moment there. Like you saw those flowers, something with the flowers sparked your interest and you chose to seize that moment. Awesome. That's sort of like a more subtle version of moment, but good job. Thank you so much for sharing your photo. Okay, so I think that was um, in this group that that was everybody that chose to share a photo. Um, Haley, can I just interrupt you? Because yeah. I actually got a couple more. Okay, if you got as we were talking, so I put them up. So um, can you briefly stop sharing your screen and I'll share yeah. mine? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So sorry, I didn't put the name up, and okay. I forget who submitted this. So if you can unmute yourself and, and say who it was. Or I can look it up too. Well, while got lots of smiley faces. Cora yeah. Bell, is this your photograph? Uh, that, um, that one on the screen, that's not my photograph on the screen right now. Oh, okay. But you love it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just go ahead and talk about the, the photograph on the screen. Um, okay, wow, look at, okay, first of all, let's just start with lines and shapes. We've got the lines of the, uh, uh, the shelves that the buckets of flowers are on. We've got the shapes, like look at all the, the circles going on from all the buckets. Repetition between, I mean, how many buckets are on here? 20? Um, and then all the signs, you know, $5.99, $4.99, like all kind of coming out um, of the buckets in different angles, like such a cool use of repetition. And then we've got um, like moment here for me is like, it's like somebody was like, they saw these flowers, they're pushing their shopping cart. They saw these flowers and they're like, wow, I, I got to I gotta point my shopping cart right at those flowers. Like I got to buy some of these flowers. Um, so this is a really cool photograph. I, um, the color, of course, there's a lot of colors going on, which just all these like floral colors just make you really happy. And then we've got the cool, you know, we got the text up on, um, you know, where it says Trader Joe's Japanese friendship garden. And then we've got that beautiful uh, cherry blossom tree. Um, so all of it works really, really well together. Uh, well done. I'm, I'm not sure yeah, if we... it's actually Emily, Emily, yep. okay. Emily Parameter. Parameter. Did, did you want to say anything about your photo? And I think she has another one too. So, and there, there's that one too. Okay, cool. All right. So here we have a photo of a person they've chosen to stand up on looks like one of those like low sitting walls and they're sort of framed by this tree so interestingly we talked about um you know shapes um and i had said about how rectangles can frame a person really well um this is another use of framing right here this tree is really really um is, is really framing her see how it's like kind of coming up and arching over her 
Um, I think if you were to play with the perspective of this, um, like maybe the person with the camera to stand maybe up on their tippy toes or just a little bit higher, uh, that the branch right above the subject's head would give, there'd be a little bit more space in between. Um, but I love how the tree is, is completely framing her. And then of course, we talked about lines and one of a different type of line that I didn't really touch on today. There are so many different uses of lines um, is an implied line. And so right here with her gaze, gazing off to the left, there's an implied line there. Like where I'm wondering, what is she looking at? And my eye kind of follows where her eye line is right now. So well done. It, uh, did you want to say anything about this photo? No, I don't have anything else to add. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing. Okay, this is a gorgeous photo. Um, looks like either beach or bay. Um, so right away, I love the point of view. The point of view of getting really, really down low. So you get the, the sand in the foreground really in detail. And then the, you know, the the sand moving out, you know, a little bit more uh, blurred to the water, which isn't, you know, in focus. That's a really cool decision that you made here. Um, I love the light and shadow you have. Like, look at how the the shadow really highlights just the movement in the sand because we all know sand is, you know, pretty pretty bumpy and has like a lot of rolls. And so the light and shadow are really working to highlight that. And then. Um, Another, another thing that's going on here that I, that we didn't touch about, because this is more of a decision um, that you can make with photography, but it's where you've chosen to place the horizon line. It's on the rule of thirds, which always, um, I don't want to say always, but most of the time will make your photograph a bit stronger versus having the, um, having the horizon line right at the middle. Um, so really well done. I like that you've captured that sunbeam in there. I'm guessing this is taken with a cell phone because of the little, oftentimes when you point your cell phone at the sun like this, you'll get this little, little green dot. Um, but yeah, really well done. Did you want to say anything about that? Nope. Thank you. Okay. Well, good. All thank right. you. So much I have a couple here. more that came through email. So I just opened up the email so you could see them rather than trying to get them into the word document. Cool. Very cool. Okay. So this is awesome. Look at all the shapes. Like right away, did everyone see those? Uh, there's like one large triangle right there that, which forms, you know, that, that beam coming down the middle forms two smaller triangles. And then the subject is framed in the, the triangle on the right. Um, we've got some repetition with the bunks on either side. And then also with the way the canopy is draped up above. And then you sort of emulate that same thing with the, the larger triangle down below. Um, we've got a lot of lines. Um, I love how I love how the photographer in this photo um, chose to stand up high enough to get the lines of the floorboards because that sort of and like there's like these little dots in the floorboards that lead right to the subject and right to the opening of this triangle. So we've got lines running in like a lot of different um, different directions, but they all lead us to the, this pocket of light where our subject is framed within this larger triangle. Really well done. Oh, and the color too. So the blue and the orange that we have going on here, like great, like a great color combination. Um, so well done. Did you want to say anything about this photo? I have a question for Sophie, actually. Sophie, are you from a different council than Colorado? Because I saw you put Camporee. Oh, yeah, I'm from California. Cool. Love it. <laughs> awesome, Sophie. <laughs> well, I we haven't had a Camporee here in Colorado. So I, I always know it's a Girl Scout from a different state. And I would love to go to a Camporee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, like I, I've got another one. I want to be in that camp, that, that camp photo right there. Like, that looks like an awesome camp. <laughs> Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll start commenting on this one. Um, it looks like we can't view the photo unless you can make it a little bit smaller. Okay, there you go.
Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we've got like some really cool foliage in this picture. Um, we got like a lot of really cool colors. Like for me, my eye goes right to that fuchsia flower, um, sort of right, right in the middle there. Um, and then, then the color just sort of gets softer from there. Um, we've got a lot of like, we've got like this big line coming in where it looks like the petals are sort of in the process of falling off. Um, yeah. And then we've got, yeah, like the, the little white flowers, like, yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on there. So, okay. This photo is super cool too. Um, so we've got some really cool vertical lines going here. Like, I don't know if everybody else noticed that, but like right away, my eye was drawn to the right side of the screen um, where we've got this like really tall, wild looking tree. And there, there's definitely like a sense of scale there. And then we've got this gorgeous sky behind it. So I, I love the crop here. Like you've, you've incorporated the sky as well as the tree and like so they're they're both sort of the focus of the photo but my eye immediately goes towards the green and all of the cool detail in these like hanging um hanging wild branches coming off the tree so well done did you want to say anything about your photos okay um nothing much just thought the sky and the tree looks cool so I just took the picture yeah I mean like thinking something is cool is a great start to taking a photo you know but if you're interested in it you could make other people interested in it so well done thank you so much for sharing I think that is all um okay. Christine was trying to send me a picture but um I don't think we got it through, but I don't know if Christine, you, if you have it up on your screen, you can share it if you want. Oh. I have my picture. Okay. Okay. She had a picture of her dog. Serious. Okay. Let's see here. I don't know that I can quite see it. Let me see if I can make it bigger. <laughs> No. Yeah. No. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I'm sorry. Um, so does anybody, um, does anybody have any questions? Um, I think I'd like one more slide in my presentation, but I could literally just tell everybody too, what I was going to say. Great. Um, so I, I think, so, going back to that exercise that I had everybody do, um, and I saw a lot of the pictures from today's picture share, um, with what you learned today about all the different elements of photography, I would challenge you to go back to that same scene if you can and see if you might start noticing some of those things. Like, are you noticing the lines? Are you noticing the light in the shadow, the colors? Um, and do you think that you could make your image even stronger by incorporating some of those elements into your photograph? Um, as artists, like I think I mentioned this before, you might be drawn to one element over another. Like I think I told all of you that I'm really drawn to lines. Um, I also really love light and shadow. I mean, I like all of the elements, but I would say the one that I use the most is probably lines and shapes. Um, and so some photographs, like they might have all of the elements that we talked about today. They might have one. It doesn't, uh, for a photograph to be really strong, it doesn't have to have all of the elements. It could just have one of the elements. It could have two of the elements. Um, but the, the, the tools that I shared with you today are just ways that you can make your image even stronger. Um, and then the last thing that I would say is for anybody that's interested in photography, um, a question I often get is like, how can I, how can I get better at photography? And I think the number one thing you can do is to take a photo every single day. And when you go out to take that photo, maybe do that exercise that I had you do, you know, photograph 
like the thing that you want to take a picture of, photograph it in six ways and look back at your pictures and be like, well, what perspective did I really like the best? Um, it is the perspective that I chose. Is that highlighting some of the elements we talked about today? Like, does it make you notice more of the shapes and lines uh, or repetition that might be present in the scene? Um, so yeah, so take a picture, take a picture every day. Um, doing something every day is going to make, and you don't have to spend more than five minutes, but um, doing something every day makes you better at anything that you try. Mm -hmm. How true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Haley. And um, for, uh, this is the older Girl Scout Inspiring Futures. And I don't know if any of you are senior Girl Scouts um, in grade nine or 10, but there is a photographer badge. So um, it's pretty, everything that Haley's been sharing with you, I'm sure you'll find helpful when you do the badge. Um, so, or, and this will be recorded as I was saying, so you can always refer back to it in the uh, YouTube channel um, and rewatch it and, and things like that when you're doing, if and when you're doing your photographer badge. So awesome. Yeah. Um, and I will sh quickly share my screen one more time just to let you know about the, in um, the Inspiring Futures batch. So there is a fun patch for this, which will go on your back of your vest or your sash. Um, the first Inspiring Futures that you're attending, you get the main one and plus the rockers, and this would be the life skills one. So there'll be an email going out to your caregiver, um, asking them to fill out a survey and in which they'll put down their address and which one, which um, badge they need, and I will get it off in the mail. Um, so I want to thank College Invest and Girl Scouts of Colorado for Inspiring Futures, and we hope to see you at another Inspiring Futures in the future. <laughs> We've got a lot of great um, professional women that are going to be talking to Girl Scouts about their inspired future. So the YouTube channel, it's called Inspiring Futures. So if you, it's a little hard to find, but I will email out everybody the link to the Inspiring Futures YouTube channel. But if you put Girl Scouts of Colorado Inspiring Futures, you will probably get to it. I have found the search word inspiring futures gets you a whole ton of YouTube channels. So, so it is a little tricky to find, but uh, I'll make sure that I email out that link. So thanks Girl Scouts for being here. Thank you, Haley, so much. That was so informational and uh, hope everybody has some wonderful pictures for their future. Just got an adios. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, girls. Bye.